then the other one, the last one, let's see if I can get this down to where it needs to be. Uh, right there. As you can see right here, it's a long cable. It looks like this. Again, this is pretty obvious to know, uh, figure out which one uh, goes where. But it doesn't hurt to uh, you know watch a couple of videos so you can be sure. And this, I kind of wish I put this DVD-ROM drive in last because it is kind of hard to uh, mount this in here with my hands. So again, let me just try to position this. Maybe kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing, but again, if it doesn't go in one way, just try turning it around uh, the other way. All right. And there we go, everything's in. You will have extra uh, power supply cables, but this all right, just uh, wrap those up again when we're done. Just try to clean it up. Now I have wires just going everywhere. You definitely want to make sure your fan uh, still has room to spin and none of your coils are blocking that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do just slide everything inside. You will have probably to crunch everything inside here. And put my power supply back in this original spot, like so. And something else, let's see if I can get a good picture of this, get a good angle. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but um. The only thing that I was concerned with is this fan, which is right in here. Um, one guy was complaining about that the case was so small he had to buy another fan because the one his CPU came with was bumping into the power supply unit and it wasn't enough room. But as you can see, so I have enough room, thank goodness, and I should be alright with that. Again, I will have to move some of these cords around just to make a, a little bit more room for air to circulate. So in a way... Uh, I can go ahead and just screw down my uh, power supply unit and we will be just about finished with the whole thing here. And let me just go ahead and hook my uh, serial ATA data cable back up to my DVD-ROM drive. I forgot I had that out to help me be able to hook this power supply unit cable in. So. That cable again goes directly into the DVD ROM drive data port. And there we go. All right, so my power supply unit is in, and as you see, I have a crop load of wires just everywhere. I'm gonna have to check that fan, make sure that fan can still rotate, but and move all these wires that I'm not even using out of the way. But yeah, that's basically almost it. I'm not gonna put the top of the case back on. I do want to power this on with just it exposed. So if I do need to make any changes, I can do that. Uh, without putting in a lot of work and effort. And something else that my uh, case included was just some uh, legs or some type of cushioners, rubber cushioners that can uh, <clears throat> prevent my computer case from sliding around. So you just basically peel off the protective layer of the back of it. And this case does have little lines on it to indicate where it should uh, go. Stick it on just like that. And let's just do the other two. Alright, just 
going to set it back on this top side. There you go, nice and sturdy. And now I'm going to just go ahead and try to install the operating system on it. I'm not sure which one I made. I might install Windows XP first and then later on wipe it and install Windows 7 on it. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is just um, power it up for the first time. Here you can see I have my power cable already hooked in the back. I have my two USB uh, going to my keyboard, which I already had on hand, as well as my mouse. <clears throat> and I have my VGA cable in the back here hooked up to this monitor. So I'm going to just go ahead and power it on. Hopefully everything goes well. So here we go. And looking at the manual, it did say press delete to go into the bio. So that's the first thing I want to do. Okay, so I heard a beep, and I'm just going to go ahead and... Okay, so as you can see, the BIOS did uh, show up. That's a good sign, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on that. So, let's see here. As you can see, it did detect our uh, CPU, Intel, Celeron. That's good. And let's see here. Probably need to set up my boot. How I want things to boot up. So I'm put my CD, I uh, my, my DVD ROM first, and I'm put my hard drive second. And I don't know a lot about the different configurations you should have set up, but let's see how that works. On exit, save the changes. Okay. And I also have my uh, operating system CD here as well, so I'm going to put that inside. It's good that my DVD tray does work. So hopefully it detects that and starts to install my uh, operating system. And I'm installing Windows XP for right now. So far it's looking good. Alright. And later on I probably will install Windows 7, but uh, I need to buy another serial uh, activation key. So far everything is looking alright. Uh, I'm just going to show you what's going on with the actual... Uh, computer itself while this goes on so my fan if you can hear that is running which is good going here to the front that red light there is just uh, detecting my hard drive and you can see the green power button scoot that over a little bit so that looks good the window setup is just detecting the drivers and everything, loading the different files. So, so far, everything is looking great. I mean, I can't believe it's working <laughs> again, but it looks good. So, now I'm going to just go ahead and try to install Windows XP. And I do just have one gigabyte of RAM, so it should run it just fine. So, let me put this back on a tripod here. You see, this is a homemade video, but... Again, this is really, I'm not really trying to make it perfect, but something I can just put on my website and so I can know that I did uh, build my own computer. So, press enter, press F8, and press enter to install on this disk. And I'm just going to do a quick format. Since the hard drive is new, 